Hey there, sports card enthusiasts. Welcome back to the channel. Whether you are a seasoned collector wanting to make some extra cash or a newbie investor bro looking to become the next cardboard millionaire, I've got you covered. In this video, I'm gonna be providing a comprehensive overview of the 10 places you can begin selling your sports cards today. And in 2024, lots of things have changed. With sports cards growing to become a $5 billion industry, there is no shortage of different online platforms emerging to take a slice of that pie. As are many of these platforms worth your time? Let's find out. But before starting, I would like to disclose my obvious conflicts of interest to the viewership. This video is absolutely 100% not sponsored by anyone or any entity. And if you enjoy high quality content like this instead of being force fed mundane, color blast and kaboom weekly pickup content by cardboard influencer shields who are sponsored by the greedy manufacturers, then I would greatly appreciate if you hit that like button and subscribe so you can be notified when content like this gets released. Fair warning, this review is meant to be as unbiased and as objective as possible. If the truth causes your butthole to hurt, go seek help from a doctor. Okay, in order to complete this review, I looked at the top 10 platforms and venues for which sports cards and memorabilia are transacted in 2024 and compared each platform across four different domains. These four domains I've then ranked in terms of matter of importance as each domain is not weighted equally to the others. To me, what makes a great platform is in fact more so an art than a science, but many of these domains are indeed black and white. As we work our way through each domain, each platform will be assigned a numerical score from one to five. Again, not every domain is equal, so a five in one domain is not the same as a five in a separate domain, so please keep that in mind as we go through the video. The 10 platforms chosen were based almost exclusively on volume and applicability to the majority of the sports cards transacted in the marketplace. You will see notable omissions from this review, predominantly being higher-end auction houses such as Heritage Auctions, Memory Lane. To me, these marketplaces have limited utility as they only serve the highest of the high-end sports memorabilia items with limited applicability to most sellers. And I'm not convinced that these platforms, including some of the ones that I'm gonna be reviewing, can garner the highest return for your items. The 10 auctions that I did choose are listed in no particular order, starting with Golden Auctions, then PWCC, Check Out My Cards, Whatnot, My Slabs, social media sites like Instagram, Facebook Marketplaces, Arena Club, cardboard message boards like Blow Up Forums, Net54, Sports Card Forum, etc., and in person at sports card shows for which there are many, and last but not least, eBay. Each of these platforms excels in one or more of the various domains, so to begin the review, let's get started with visibility. When I think of visibility, to put it in its simplest terms, this is the amount of potential buyers that are seeing your cards. This can be measured by impressions made, views on your listing, etc. Obviously, web-based or online platforms are going to have a wider audience than the lone in-person card show venue. So among the other nine, it's important to identify which platform gets the most traffic. While there isn't good data readily available on web traffic that can be used to rank order these platforms, I did provide my best overall gauge of traffic based on the discussions that I see take place, the conversations that I have with collectors, and my overall user experience as a buyer on the other end of the transaction. So with that, I do have some experience with most of these platforms in one degree or another. In terms of most traffic or the largest marketplace, it is rather indisputable that eBay remains in 2024 the platform that generates the most traffic from potential buyers. Originating in the late 90s as the first web-based platform to sell virtually anything virtually, this platform has maintained its large array of buyers and sellers operating on the platform. With eBay's success, many other platforms have emerged in the marketplace to try and compete, notably PWCC, who once operated on eBay but has gone through a plethora of scandals and thus was promptly booted off eBay, most likely due to eBay sniffing out that PWCC was using their eBay profits from their consignment business to build up its own standalone platform to compete with eBay. Great way to get kicked off eBay unless you opt in to partner, which some of these other competitors have. Golden Auctions has also emerged, first originating as a high-end auction house, but now trying to feast off the margins of those measly sub $1,000 cards via a new weekly auction style platform and seller marketplace. Both of these platforms likely generate a similar amount of traffic, but none really approach the size and scale of eBay. 
Check out my cards also has been a staple as it relates to buyer traffic, mainly due to their origins where they began specializing in low-end cards, opting to store low-end cards for sellers at a third-party location, and allowing buyers to transact on a platform and transfer the cards into their portfolio without having to pay high shipping costs, which otherwise would be cost prohibitive to the transaction. Since then, Check Out My Cards has grown their business tremendously, now allowing for grading straight from the platform and starting an eBay consignment auction style business. Platforms like Whatnot are relatively new, allowing for sellers who are approved to join the platform and sell via auction style or card show style live and virtually to an audience. The platform itself does generate a lot of traffic, but sellers do have to market their sales themselves and you're competing with others, others on the platform, having live shows and auctions as well. Last but not least, we have the most powerful social media platform for cards right now in Instagram, where collectors can post images of their collections or items they wanna sell. And by using clever hashtags or key search terms, allow other collectors to see and negotiate directly with the seller. The rest of the platforms as of this writing really do not generate the type of web traffic needed or user base required to make them viable to discuss for this domain. MySlabs was a strong contender and probably ranked higher previously and immediately after the COVID boom, but recently it seems traffic really has fallen off and I quite honestly never hear anyone talk about using Arena Club other than the few people writing reviews on my Arena Club review video claiming that Arena Club was going to shake up the hobby for the better. <laughs> yeah, sure. Message boards also used to rank higher on this list, but with the emergence of all the other platforms, message boards seem to have had its marketplace users diluted and now bifurcated to other platforms, making the overall selling experience less enjoyable as fewer people seem to check out the buy, sell, trade sections of Blowout, Net54, and Sports Card Forum. Don't get me wrong, there is still an audience, there's still traffic, it's just nowhere near what it used to be thanks to the COVID boom generating a lot of competition. The next domain I would like to talk about is scalability. Scalability, again, is how I can leverage the platform to scale the business. Is this a one card at a time platform or can I list a lot of cards quickly, easily, negotiate prices fast and painlessly, as well as ship cards out using a platform-based shipping tool or have the platform do it all for me? Basically, how can this platform allow me to scale my business? And when looking at it through that lens, there are some obvious winners that come to mind. Five of the 10 platforms have focused on this as it relates to their user experience from a seller's perspective, including Golden Auctions, PWCC, Check Out My Cards, Arena Club, and eBay. Now, yes, there is a variance even among these groups, but each has the potential to be leveraged in max capacity to scale your business. First and foremost, with Golden Auctions, you can direct your PSA returns directly to Golden and list immediately on the marketplace via auction style listings or to the Premier Auction. So let's say you don't have a PSA order returning. No problem. You can send them directly and they handle all of the work for you, again, allowing you to scale your business. Same goes for PWCC, same goes for Check Out My Cards, same goes for Arena Club, and then even the consigners that you can choose from on eBay. Now there are a variety of different consigners that you can use on eBay. I will not name them so as to not promote their businesses as I've done in the past. You can do your own research or if you would like me to do a state of the eBay consigners video comparing them all, I would be happy to do so. Please comment down below. But all of these venues allow you to ship cards directly to them, provide a list of what you're submitting to sell on the platform and they will take care of the rest. Easy, right? Well, then you look at other platforms, platforms and venues like card shows, whatnot, my slabs, social media, really are a one card at a time type of model that ties your time directly to the volume of cards you are selling in your single listing. Sure, you can have a buyer buy you out at a card show, buy all of your items on a single social media post, but that's not really the same. For the most part, these are still one transaction at a time where you are manually having to sell each transaction and other parties aren't doing the work for you, so they are going to score much lower here. The third domain we're gonna be taking a look at is competition. Competition means a combination of two things. Obviously the first is how many other sellers are you directly competing against on that platform. On eBay, that means how many other sellers are selling on the platform. On the other extreme, if we look at card shows, it's how many other sellers are set up also at that show. The other part about competition, however, is how many of the items you have that are competing directly with items that other sellers have. 
And again, this can mean a couple of different things. This could mean how many other sellers have the exact same card and thus you are competing for first eyeballs or lowest price. Or it could also mean how many other sellers have a similar type of card buyers are looking for and thus you are competing for the finite amount of dollars the buyers have to give to the marketplace. Something like an on-card autograph of Albert Pujols, which came up recently at a card show that I attended. The first seller that has one in the display case from a buyer looking for that Pujols autograph will likely make the sale. But if you're a seller that's set up way back in the show and you have a nice Pujols autograph, but the buyer didn't see yours first, then you're probably gonna miss out on that sale. So competition really should be looked at in two different ways. So again, as we look at competition, it becomes very obvious that the larger the marketplace, the more competition that marketplace is gonna have both in seller volume as well as item selection. And thus, it's no secret then that eBay ranks the absolute worst here because they have the highest visibility. eBay, after all, has long been blamed, and perhaps rightfully so, for killing the sports card market during the 2000s because the cards that were once thought of as folk legend, rare, only available to the truly elite collectors of the filthy rich. Well, as it turned out, they were actually really super common and available everywhere, especially once the marketplace was revealed to the entire world via the World Wide Web. Now, the flip side to that is a venue like a card show. This is by far the lowest level of competition, and let's face it, not only is the venue highly localized, as it literally only includes sellers that can fit essentially into one giant room, but the overall class of seller is also highly localized. What do I mean by that? Well, you could literally have a 100 table show where 20 dealers are selling crap Pokemon, all right? Another 60 dealers are flipping the latest Poopini Prism product with rainbows and parallels of all your favorite eighth year semi-star scrubs. The other 10 dealers found grandpa's cards in the attic, but turns out grandpa had bad taste and it's all junk 89 tops baseball. And then you got the other nine dealers who you're actually competing with who know what they are doing because they've done this for a very long time. They are your true competition. So additionally, if you specialize in a niche, you may be the only competent dealer at your show that has cards that buyers actually want. When buyers come to a show, they do have money burning a hole in their pocket and will fork it over to you because they are in person and the card they want is staring them right in the face. The more unique your card is that fits the buyer's want list, the easier it is for you to make a sale because you're not competing with all the other junk kabooms and color blasts and downtowns and poopini zebra, elephant, pink wave, unicorn parallels that all the other pelican boys have in their showcases. Now, aside from the extremes, the middle platforms are quite gray. Check out my card scores low here again because again, they specialize in low-end cards and they are a large volume of low-end cards out there in the marketplace. So competition really is stiff and you really have to win out on price almost exclusively. Last but certainly not least is going to be seller fees to operate on the platform. And this is where things get really interesting as well as scientific, but also complicated, especially for our emerging marketplaces looking to steal away your eBay seller fee dollars from eBay. First, we have to look at two platforms that are the most similar in Golden and PWCC. And I have to admit something, both of these platforms had the best shot at stealing away visibility from eBay. But both of them fell completely flat on their faces because they are robbing their customers blind with the worst selling fee structures of any platform. Literally, if I could score them a zero out of five, I would. Actually, they don't even deserve to be scored because what they are doing to sellers is disgusting. Both have sliding skills where the true selling costs start out for golden auctions, for an auction style listing, at 27%. And PWCC starts off at 20%. What a complete <laughs> rip off. These platforms are legitimately highway robbery, but the Neanderthal user base that continues to send these companies inventory to move is not stopping. It is incredible how many people these used car salesmen shysters trick into using their platform and then bending them over backwards and raping them over the coals. Essentially, as a seller of sports cards, these fees are a complete deal breaker. They are. I don't know who uses these platforms and what margins they are making, but at these fees, this would kill my business. 
They are in no way competitive. And if you're looking at these fees and are seriously confused about how I came to the conclusion that the fees are 27% for Golden and 20% for PWCC, you have no business selling sports cards or any other widget on earth. You won't make it. Trust me. Go play video games, go read a book, find a new hobby because this is a concept you really should be able to intuitively understand if you want to be successful as a seller. As we move away from the two slimiest platforms, we now begin our review of Check Out My Cards fee structure as well as eBay because again, both have sliding scales and both offer distinct advantages that separate them from other platforms. First, let's start off with Check Out My Cards. The platform that specializes in having one of the lowest fee structures for a web-based platform both for auction style and fixed price listings when consigning via eBay. Or actually a completely free fee structure when selling on a platform, but there is a catch. The catch is the fees remain low, so as long as you keep your money in the Check Out My Cards platform itself. See, Check Out My Cards does not want you extracting the money out of the platform into your bank account or PayPal account. The more money you have tied into Check Out My Cards, the more likely you will continue to use the platform and thus more eyeballs buying and selling, more submission volume to third party grading companies, for which they surely get a kickback, and of course more eBay consignment fees from the flipping crowd. If you dare want to extract your money and get it back into your hands, you're looking at a 10% extraction fee to start and fees go up from there depending on whether you want a PayPal deposit or a check sent to you directly. So the catch is sell on the platform, sell via consignment, it's cheap, but you really have to take that money to buy cards back on the platform, otherwise there really isn't a big cost advantage to using the platform. eBay, on the other hand, has been increasing its fees for years, and yet despite that, much to my chagrin, eBay still remains a competitive marketplace relative to all the other duds that have emerged as competitors in 2024. Fees increased for sports cards, again, who would have imagined, in 2023 to a whopping 13.25% starting out for eBay. Drop below seller performance standards and you can tack on another 6% to that. Now, if you do open a basic store or higher, which does, again, come with its own monthly fee, depending on your store subscription, those final value fees drop to 12.25%, which actually is a pretty significant drop, especially if you're moving six figures worth of sports cards annually. On top of that, if you do hit top rated seller plus status by keeping your performance metrics high, you get an additional 10% off your final value fees, dropping this fee down closer to 11% of the sale price, which again is a huge difference, especially compared to the lowest performing platforms operating in this space. Now, eBay consignment groups will have varied fee schedules, so this doesn't pertain to them necessarily. Most will try to be competitive, especially on cards less than $7,500. Flipping over the net to the rest of the platforms and venues, the obvious winners are the free platforms. Social media sites, cardboard message boards, in-person set shows, uh, all of course are essentially considered free, although sports card shows will of course charge table fees, which are gonna vary and have an overall varied impact as it relates to the percentage of cards sold. But you control your price and you're not paying a fee to sell on any of the free platforms. My Slabs also extremely competitive and very much so considered a disruptor in the space with fees of 1% for graded cards and 3% for raw cards. However, it's worth noting that given that My Slabs user base and overall visibility ranks so low, incentivizing with an enticing fee structure does not necessarily translate that the platform will have a higher user base. It's important, but it's not the only factor. Other platforms like Whatnot take 10.9% plus a 30 cent per transaction fee, Arena Club at 10%, all still competitive, but all with their own drawbacks and perhaps not enticing of a percentage enough to get people away from the other larger platforms. So now that we've reviewed these 10 platforms, I've decided to narrow the list down to my top three platforms that sellers should consider using in 2023. Of course, one size does not fit all. Sellers have various motivations to operate on various platforms based on how they like to participate in the hobby. If one likes to socialize on the weekends with other like-minded cardboard folks and hobbyists, and they want to avoid all the shenanigans involved with having to deal with the problems of selling cards online, such as returns, idiotic buyers, shield bidding, etc., then the obvious answer is that the seller should sell cards in person at local shows. If a dealer specializes in low-end inventory that is too cheap to sell on eBay because shipping costs are too high, even with the eBay standard envelope, and they want a platform that can do all the work for them, then Check Out My Cards is the right answer. 
Check out my cards is also great for the casual flipper or grader who buys cards, grades them, moves them via consignment, and keeps the money within the same platform to buy more cards and repeat the cycle. If that's you, then check out my cards is made exactly for you. If you want to sell your items to the widest possible audience, resulting in the fastest sales, likely the highest sales, and the highest take home prices after fees are considered, then of course you have to operate on eBay. The combination of visibility to buyers, scalability, and moderately competitive fee structures, even in 2024, makes this a no-brainer. But of course, I do think that there is one marketplace that stands above the rest. And guys, it I hate to say this. It pains me to my core to say this. With all of the COVID investment money that's been poured into the hobby, Gary V. Father Gary himself promised that the big institutions would be investing heavily in the card market to bring updated technology and presumably better marketplaces to our hobby. And despite having newer competition from the likes of PWCC, Golden Auctions, especially as it relates to their new weekly auction and marketplace formats, my slabs, Arena Club, whatnot, and every other new emerging marketplace platform out there, guys, I hate to say it because I hate this venue with a passion but the winner in 2024 is still eBay. The fees keep going up. The sellers have zero protection from pathetic scammers and buyers unless selling cards through the eBay authentication program, which I'll admit has been a, a good improvement. They now want you, the seller, to pay the advertising costs directly to Google in order to attract buyers who may be searching on Google to come to eBay. The customer service is a joke. And yet, despite all of these massive shortcomings, the competition is complete dog shit. The only hope that I had for a viable, long-term competitor to eBay that can truly compete at all price levels of sports cards was the marketplace that Nat Turner envisioned when he took over PSA. And I thought for sure that once the announcement was made that PSA was acquiring Golden Auctions, we truly would have a marketplace disruptor where I could no longer have to deal with eBay bullshit, buyer bullshit, Shill bidding, scammers, lost mail, you name it. I could send directly to PSA and they would literally take care of me from the rest of the process, going from the grading stages all the way to selling the cards and shipping it out, to depositing money in my bank account. And after thinking all of those great thoughts in my big brain, what do we get? We get 27% consignment fees. <laughs> 27% fees, oh my gosh. Well. Good effort, boys, but it looks like we are still stuck on using eBay until a real winner steps up and says, you know what, I'd like a big piece of that big old fat $5 billion industry and I'm not really all that greedy. I'm going to undercut every other platform out there on fees and build the definitive marketplace. Well, you know, until that happens, until somebody gets actually serious about competing with eBay, I'll be stuck on eBay for a very, very long time. Thanks guys, let me know in the comments where I got this right, let me know where I got this wrong, and I also wanna hear your top three platforms that you sell on, because I am dying to get off of eBay. I'm sure a lot of others are out there as well, but from my experience, it still remains the best spot to building a sustainable, scalable business that has the widest audience where you can move cards quickly. Let me know what your thoughts are, and we will see you next time.